Welcome to the all-new Marvelicious Toys Podcast, hosted by the astonishing Arnie, the mighty Marjorie, and Captain Justin. Nah, just Justin. Join us at MarveliciousToys.com to find thousands of pictures of the items reviewed, find links to our Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube pages, and much more. Welcome to Marvelicious Toys. This is Marjorie. This is Arnie. And this is Justin. We're back again. Told you guys we'd be doing live shows. How could we not be back when the entire day just about became nothing but an endgame trailer watch party? Whatever it takes. Oh my <laughs> god! Did you guys get the feels? Yeah, and I, I feel like it's the first time that I could allow myself to enjoy it because I I've known forever. It's like, well, we don't get Endgame until we get past Captain Marvel. You know, it's not that I didn't want to see Captain Marvel. It's just it was a barrier in between us and Endgame. Yeah, I mean, nothing against Captain Marvel. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But I feel like we were just standing at the edge of the cliff, waiting for this last weekend to get Captain Marvel. So that we could then get to all this good stuff. And, you know, nothing against that. But I, I need my Avengers. Not, not only did a trailer drop, but I've seen somebody in Canada already found the first wave of Marvel Legends for Endgame. So I saw that about... picture, too, but we can't talk about that. Nope, but we can talk about somebody had found it. So <laughs> Yes, we can talk about <laughs> that. Is it, my girlfriend in Niagara Falls on the Canada side. <laughs> well, here, here's what I do know. I expect that we're also going to have some Dole tie-ins again, as there are Dole tie-ins, tie-ins for Captain America. It's already been confirmed there are the popcorn with Orville Redenbacher again. I'm expecting a full-on grocery store Avengers Endgame experience. I'm still loving my Infinity War Ziploc bags. You laugh, Justin, but damn it, Arnie. <laughs> Don't I pack your lunches in Infinity War game, uh, um, Ziploc bags? Just like a good wife, yes. Yes, and <laughs> because Thor has Mjolnir and Stormax on, I think it's Stormax on there. He Stormbreaker. Lost, it's Stormbreaker. Um, the lightning coming off of it, if you're not careful, it looks like your food is moldy. <laughs> the reason I laugh is because for years we've had code Spider-Man for Arnie. I think now we might have code Endgame for for you, Marjorie. Like any household goods that have an Endgame on it, you're going for it. Well, yes. If anybody is friends with me on Facebook, you know I don't manually grocery shop, but I have been lately just so I could find the very first Endgame products in the store. I, I may be slightly hyped, but with this hype also comes an ungodly level of anxiety because I'm terrified that Cap's going to die. You know, this happened last year, too, where she was actually at a point of, we need to find something, anything, anything at all that is Avengers Infinity War. I need toys. There were no Hasbro figures out yet. There were no <laughs> anything. And she, she, I, it just so happened I had bought her a Cosbaby keychain from Japan that I was waiting. And so that satiated her. Yeah, you, you gave that to me like the very next day. You're like, I was holding this, but, and it's, it's adorable. It's Captain America. It was my first piece of Infinity War merchandise, but there may be a problem brewing. And I don't get like this, Justin. You know that. I know. It's why it's a little bit of excitement. I'm, I'm excited because you're excited and you just, you don't get like this for movies. No. And you know, what's funny is I was so hyped about an Infinity War. You know, I did get that Winter Soldier tattoo a few years ago and I got bored at a convention in like October and I had like two hours to kill. And I'm like, oh, I'll get a tattoo. Why not? And I ended up getting the Avengers A with a cap <laughs> shield behind it tattooed. There may be another one of going to some conventions with some tattoos in the near future and maybe more Avengers tattoos. Coming. Yeah, it's there's so much hype going on. I think the last one she was this excited for beyond Infinity War was probably Guardians 1. Yeah, yeah, and I was pretty hyped up for Civil War, but this is like unprecedented level of hype for me. I, I'm not usually like this. I'm usually the sane one that can make rational decisions and 
doesn't buy silly stuff, but yeah, I'm probably buying silly stuff, not going to lie. I, I will say I do keep buying the Ziploc containers also. They have Iron Man and Hulk in the round containers for Ziploc, and I've amassed quite a collection of those, and I guess Arnie probably feels silly taking his soup to work in an Iron Man container. No, I, I like it. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it's if you're feeling what I'm feeling and it's like, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know who's going to survive this movie, but we do know that it's the end of an era. Like whatever happens after this movie, the MCU is not going to be the same anymore after this. It's going to change into something new or continue to evolve into what it's been evolving into. But our classic MCU universe is about to end for the most part. I know. And I, I was, you know, you guys can hear our review over at now playing of Captain Marvel, but I ranked the entire MCU in that end of that show. And in the top tier of all of the Marvel films, all 21 are the ones done by Anthony and Joe Russo. So I have great faith in them. And Indeed. Three hours long, you know, Gilligan could go on a boat tour for that length, but we're going to watch a movie. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to have to dehydrate myself before the movie also so that I don't have to go to the bathroom and I will not allow any food or liquids to be consumed during this. <laughs> I don't or just have, understand. Just have run P set up on your phone so you so you can know when a good slow time to get out for a but minute. Will be. When, when is the run P during Infinity War? It's not. There isn't one. <laughs> And I don't think they have that, like, if you go to the first showing the first day, somebody has to put that info in. <laughs> I don't think that Disney's like, all right, make sure the run P guys get an advanced copy. <laughs> You'd be surprised. <laughs> if only we could be the run P guys then. <laughs> oh, run P, they get a list at the red carpet because they need to tell people what time to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Well, we're still a couple weeks out from this happening, and yeah, I'm I'm excited, but still have to tamp it down a little bit because we still have a little bit of time to wait. I'm surprised that it was not a part of the Captain Marvel. I mean, when we saw Captain America, the first Avenger, it ended with that trailer for Avengers 1. I kind of thought that after Captain Marvel, I mean, we have the teaser that we have, and I'm not going to do any spoilers here. But I thought that maybe they'd show this trailer there. They didn't wait very long. I mean, it's been six days since Captain Marvel came out and they put this trailer out. I think because of certain naysayers on the Internet, they didn't want to give anybody the excuse of saying, oh, people only went to see Captain Marvel so they could see this trailer. Wait, you, you can call them trolls, Arnie. It's OK. Okay, Trolls is good. Where yeah. where does Man Babies fall in? Oh, uh, that's absolutely acceptable also. <laughs> Are you talking about people who who downvote a movie well before it's even come out? I, I don't know how you could disparage somebody like that. <laughs> I know, I know. It's so weird. I know, I know. But, I mean, come on. Well, speaking of downvoting the movie, Captain Marvel did come out. I thought we'd be talking about Captain Marvel more than Endgame this show. I... My review of it came out in a two and a half hour now playing yesterday with Stuart and Jacob. But I'm curious, what do you guys think? How often have you seen it? And how did this one stand out in the six weeks it has till end game? I'll let you go first, Justin. <laughs> All right. Hey, I, I liked it. You know, I think it does what it needs to do. It introduces us to what I'm assuming to be a major player in the upcoming end game movie. So knowing that we need to have this information in just a few weeks, it was fun to get an origin story that's set in a different time frame. So not only do we get an origin story, but we get to see an origin story for a couple other characters that we've known all these years. Nick Fury and Coulson. That was kind of fun having those guys in there as younger. Took me a little bit to get over the DH Sam Jackson digitization. But, you know, once I got used to it, I went along with it. So, I, you know, I I enjoyed it. It had a lot of nostalgic fun in it. I enjoyed the way that they framed the action in like a 90s style. 
I was I was a little scared that it was going to become like a whole bunch of wink and nod 90s jokes. But there was, I think, the right amount of that stuff. It wasn't overdone, but it also wasn't super subtle either. So <laughs> if I if I had to ding it in any one area, I just felt like the score was a little lacking in places. There was just times it was just like it felt like something magnificent was happening on screen and the score was just kind of lulling me to sleep. But mm, at the end of the day, I think it's a fun movie. I don't know how many times I'm going to rewatch it, but it did what it needed to do. It got me hyped up for the next movie. I'm glad you mentioned the score, Justin, because I also thought the score was a little lacking. It was not memorable. I felt and not impactful. And I also was looking forward to the nineties soundtrack. However, it, I think it fell flat. You know, I was kind of expecting more, but I guess because I didn't listen to top 40s that it wasn't going to be my music anyway. So it took me a little bit to realize that, but I did see it twice and I think I liked it better the second time. I still had some issues with it. One, I don't think that Brie Lawson was or Larson was able to connect with the audiences very much. Like she just didn't have that. You didn't, there was nothing to make you want to root for her. I mean, we had a few montages of her doing things like a tomboy, but there just wasn't enough. And I felt we could have had a little bit more of the Air Force part to kind of connect with that time period. I kind of liked her with Maria and then, you know, Monica. I thought that was a nice touch, but I don't know. A lot of it I thought just kind of was, oh, okay, it's all right, fine. It's not like Thor too bad. But that, that's my barometer. It's better than Thor 2. <laughs> but it just, I don't know. I just, I tried. So much of it I just felt was forced. And I maybe there's a longer cut somewhere where it doesn't feel like so many things are missing. I know. I just, I wanted to really, 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 really love it. But you're right. I think it just kind of got me through to get me to end game. I agree with you on the soundtrack, too. Like, I I see what they're trying to do, and there were some fun songs there, you know, like the No Doubt and stuff like that, and ending on a whole song, Mm -hmm. fine, no big deal. But, like, it it, it seems like they were trying to capture the same magic of a Guardians of the Galaxy mixtape feel, and it's just, it did not have, it did not live up to that type of music selection that, that James Gunn had done so well at in the first two movies. The thing is with Guardians, those characters were listening to that music the whole time. It wasn't music that was scoring the film. It was music that Star-Lord had on his Walkman there. Here, it's weird because the music is all from the period of the movie, but only in like the case of Nirvana's Come As You Are and whatever song was playing in the background of that bar, are they actually hearing the music in the movie. Otherwise, it's just music we're hearing. It's not like somebody decided to jam No Doubt at the climax. (laughs) No, very good point. Good point. I'm just hoping that when they get ready to market this for home release, somebody puts out an old-style VHS tape, like the the old style with the side-opening plastic case that you can (laughs) pop out the tape. (laughs) Yeah, that's exactly what they need to do. I mean, they had the big scene in Blockbuster, and she picked up the right stuff. And I I mean, I I guess part of my problem with this movie was that nothing was subtle. They didn't take any chances in explaining to the audience what they wanted to get across. They made it very blunt. And that might've been a little bit of my problem with it, but I mean, it's not by far the worst more Marvel movie. It's not the best Marvel movie. So no, my my biggest okay, I, I guess I've said my biggest problem a couple of times, but I think the thing that's gonna bother me in the long run, once we've had a chance to live with this movie for a while and we're looking at the whole MCU as a whole, is it's gonna feel weird that this is our introduction to Screes or scrolls. Oh, sorry, scrolls. Sure scr- uh, Crees oh and scroll and scrolls. You made some sort of once. hybrid weird uh... <laughs> I made them one. The yeah. scrolls. Our introduction to scrolls should have been in the first Avengers instead of the Chitari. It would have made a lot more sense for what's going on here. But now we have this new alien race that, for the most part, the general audiences aren't going to understand where they come from or what they do or or why we should be somewhat surprised that they're, oh, wait, we're actually dealing with some good scrolls here. Well, and, you know, the people that aren't 
deep into the Marvel movies or anything like that. The questions I've been fielding from the people that are into it are like, I thought that scrolls were evil. And I thought that they were evil. And this completely blindsided me that they were nice. And it was very political, I thought, in the Kree skull wars. But... Well, that's the twist. I mean, they never want to take a comic book and adapt it directly to where you go in knowing how the story ends because you've read the comic. I think that's the big thing is people who know the comics think Skrull's evil. That's just a go-to. And then you watch the movie, and if you don't know who Skrulls are, you're shocked because you're like, oh, I was told they were bad guys. If you know who Skrulls are, you're shocked even more because that isn't what you were expecting. But I think both of you are coming off a little bit negative on this did you enjoy the film were there things you like because i'm hearing a lot of negatives yeah it's true it does sound like we are a bit i guess that's what we do is we nitpick the smaller things that we don't like when mm-hmm. we do like a movie you know if if i was really hate this movie i would have just started railing on it from jump street but it, it's an enjoyable movie and ironically it, it, brie larson was in jump street <laughs> the movie yeah 21 jump street she was <laughs> yeah oh yep Huh. <laughs> uh, yeah, but no, I mean, I really dig it. it. It was a fun movie. It did what it had to do. The special effects were pretty great. There was a few scenes where I felt like the scroll, especially like the little weird troll ones, just looked like guys in rubber masks. But I thought they looked like Ugnaughts. Yeah. <laughs> they reminded me of Ugnaughts. I like the little ones. They were really weird. The one that tabs her on the forehead. Yeah, that's the Ugnaughts. <laughs> yeah, but like, that did something. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I thought it was fine. I mean, I enjoyed parts of it. I A lot of it, the beginning, it kind of started off a little bit like Men in Black, I thought. And which was fun. I mean, I, I enjoyed it. I really thought Annette Benning did a great job, too. Annette Benning was amazing, especially in her last scene. Yes. I'm, again, staying spoiler free, but the Nirvana scene, she owns mm-hmm. that scene that was really well done on her and i liked the practical makeup on the scrolls ben mendelson i've not really liked him in the stuff i've seen him in director krennic i mean the choke on your aspirations line i choke on every time and ready player one mm, not quite ready but here <laughs> i thought he brought a lot of humor and just he was a really fun character once the the twist happened and he comes in with his milkshake. Yeah. Oddly, Taylor Swift, that was rather enjoyable. Um, and you're right. You know, Justin, you said that they tried to be guardians or I don't know which of you yeah, said him. that Justin said that, uh, at the beginning, they try to make Korath like Drax, I thought. And Korath is the guy that ends up being Ronan, the accusers, little henchman. When he says, Hey, I'm star Lord. He goes, who mm-hmm. they try to make him like Drax at the beginning. <laughs> Speaking of Korath in this movie, just a reminder, at midnight Eastern tonight at HotTopic.com, the Emerald City Comic Con exclusive Korath goes on sale, Funko Pop, so I'm staying up. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of little fun stuff like that, and I think on a second watch, like it might give me a chuckle. The first time I was sitting there thinking, like, why is... Why is Director Krennic still wearing that, that suit jacket while he's a scroll? Oh, that's supposed to be funny. I get it. That's pretty good. <laughs> like Just little <laughs> stuff like that where it's like <laughs> he's already changed. I mean, I had a few little questions like, okay, if they can shape shift by looking at somebody and they take on their physical appearance and their clothes, like when they switch back, like why are they still wearing some articles of clothing and stuff? But you don't want to get too lost in the weeds on that stuff. It It does what it needs to do. It plays as a nice twist where you're not expecting it. Yeah, I enjoyed the film pretty much. To me, what I think is Marvel movies are consistently good, and they're occasionally great. And then there's Thor 2, but we don't like to talk about him. But (laughs) I think this falls neatly in the good category. It's got some flaws, but I had fun watching it both times I went. I thought 
kind of like Black Panther. I thought some of the CGI looked a little bit not great at the end. I, I, I think it was Jacob who theorized that Marvel takes all of their CGI money and puts it towards the Avengers films. And so Black Panther and Captain Marvel yeah. kind of got low CGI budgets there because her Dragon Ball Z stuff wasn't quite all it could be, I think. <laughs> I will say that I feel like either Hasbro missed an opportunity or we will get it eventually. But like there's a scene where she's trying to figure out what colors she should have now that she's no longer affiliated with the Cree. And, you know, she's switching up her outfit a bunch of times. And there's one quick one where it's like all black, but with neon <gasps> piping. I love that one. That needs to be one of the exclusive figures. Yes. I I thought for sure they'd throw a Ms. Marvel lightning bolt in there somewhere, but they <laughs> didn't do that. <laughs> they got close to the colors, but yeah, they didn't, they didn't change her emblem. <laughs> At no point did Monica say, why don't we try a sash? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a, a quick Bob haircut just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> Have you considered a mask? <laughs> well, this episode of Marvelicious Toys, we're going to be looking the Captain Marvel Legends, but I do want to talk just a couple of things before we get there. Coming out of Toy Fair. It, I know it's been a while, but there's still, we talked a lot of Hasbro with Toy Fair, a little bit of Lego, a little bit of Funko, but there were some big things coming out of Toy Fair that I think they shocked me and I wanted to kind of talk about them with Marjorie and Justin and our listeners to see what you guys think. First of all, Diamond Select Toys, I did want to point out, this wasn't from Toy Fair, but they just put on sale this week, Ant-Man and the Wasp exclusive Marvel Select figures. Cool, kind of exciting, but man, I feel like we've gotten so many Ant-Man figures over the last couple of years. It's just, it's hard to get excited about yet another one, but they look good as always. I mean, the sculpts are always awesome. It's just the character choice that kind of leaves me saying, huh? Yeah, but they never got any figures out for that movie. Marvel Select, they've usually had at least one tie-in figure for every MCU film. This one felt like it was a hole, and I'm glad to see we're getting, you know, kind of like the giant man with all the little guys and then Wasp. I, I like that outfit, and I I wish we had human heads with them, but I did go ahead and place that order on disneystore.com so that I could continue my collection. I like the selects because you can't get them everywhere, so it's a little bit more of a hunt, and sometimes we have to actually go to the Disney store and get them too. But those are up for order, and right now, if at, you place an order at Disney Store, or apparently if you just walk into a Disney store and say Captain Marvel to any cast member, you get a free lithograph. Not even right. if I go higher, further, faster, baby. No, I think you have to Aww. say Captain Marvel. I would. They but should. They should have made it that. Do it all creepy, like like walk up to one of the employees, kind of Captain pop Marvel. Up the, yep, Captain Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> or just walk up to him and go, Captain Marvel. <laughs> walk in, slide both doors open wide, scream at the top of your lungs. Can we go to St. Louis this weekend, Arnie? <laughs> <laughs> now, there's not an expiration date here. I don't know how long this is for. In stores, I'm guessing it's while supplies last at DisneyStore.com. I've placed a couple orders lately and gotten a couple of these in the mail to me. I haven't got them yet. One's coming tomorrow, I think. But it's I thought worth pointing out that if you were thinking about ordering those select figures or the new Miles Morales toy box figure... You get a well. You have to order something, Captain, Captain Marvel. Marvel. So I I ordered some Cos Babies. I am really starting to like the Cos Baby line. They are super cute. I like them when they're at Disney Store because they're only sixteen dollars on eBay or overseas stores. I see them like eighty dollars, sixty dollars, twenty is a wonderful price for a Cos Baby. Oh yeah, I think to me like. They've taken over that cute space that Mighty Mugs used to live in. Mm -hmm. And with the return of Mighty Mugs, it just feels like it's one too many in a game that I feel like they kind of created. So it's like, move over, Hasbro. Hot Toys took your lunch again. Well, you know, I was a huge Mighty Mug fan. I think it was before we started the show, wasn't it? It was before we even collected Marvel. You had to have all the Marvel Mighty Mugs. I did. And there was a scroll, too. He's super cute. 
But I have them up in one of our guest rooms. I bought some Ikea shells, and they were lining the ceiling area. And I had to hunt those all down, and I was a big Mighty Mug fanatic. But the new line, I, I just, I'm so lukewarm on it. Even the mini mugs and things, every time they've tried to bring it back since the original vinyl line has been lesser, I don't think we're going to be seeing any of these mood ring Mighty Mugs anymore. They didn't have any out at Toy Fair, and they are all on deep, deep discount. Like uh, two and three bucks. At GameStop. Oh, yeah. And th- those are the type of things that are already showing up at like the discount retailers like Ross and TJ Maxx. I've seen Thor and, and Iron Man sitting on the shelves there. So I, it's just one of those lines that I like the idea. They just should have gone back to the original form they didn't need to reinvent that they should have just brought them back but yes i did order i was i definitely wanted the red gold and blue outfit cos baby and then i was placing a second order i'm like yeah i'll get the other cos baby and get a second lithograph yeah i mean i love these they're super cute just go ahead and buy the end game ones okay uh right now the only place i know to buy them the guy who sold me that keychain sent me an email like a month and a half ago saying I could pre-order all the end game ones, but they're like 50, $60 a piece. I'm like, I think I'm going to wait and pick and choose the best ones there. But I really, my favorite character, I think everybody's favorite character coming out of captain Marvel is goose. I really want the goose cause baby. The and the, it's, I can't <laughs> find the flurkin thing. Do they make one? <laughs> yeah, Aww. but it's not a Disney store. Hot toys makes it. But Disney only got these two. Huh. But back to my original topic here. Diamond Select. Right before Toy Fair, it was announced they purchased Gentle Giant. That's so crazy. Gentle Giant just keeps changing hands. Like, does that mean that they get the 3D printing company that purchased them too? Or did they split that off? back into Gentle Giant as its own thing and sell just that part. Gentle Giant was always a 3D modeling company. They were a company before they even started retail products with Attack of the Clones. They got into retail products because they were doing the head scans for ILM for the digital modeling of the characters. And they're like, hey, we have all these digital scans. Why don't we just like make something and sell it and make a lot of money? And... That company became 3D Systems, and then Gentle Giant kind of merged with 3D Systems. It was all very weird, but it was all like the same people until now. And you could kind of tell Gentle Giant was having, like, some problems. (laughs) When we saw them at Toy Fair in 2018, and they tried to sell me tiny tin tote lunch boxes that were you know were like one walnut, inch by sized no they were like one inch by one and a half inch yeah. i mean tiny little junk tins this is the company that used to make statues that people would scour the earth for and now they're trying to get tiny tins into walmart <laughs> And Walgreens. Oh, yeah. The minibus <laughs> world tour they had for Star Wars where there were, like, what, five minibus? Mm-hmm. And they were, like, what, 80 bucks? And five locations you could get them in only, like, Japan, Baltimore for some reason. I'm sorry, freaking Baltimore. I still get crap for that. San Diego, Celebration, and, like, somewhere else. But, like, nearly impossible. Yeah, and I could tell when they were doing that that... And their statue releases, every time we'd go there, we'd see less new stuff from them every San Diego. And then they hadn't even gone to Toy Fair until last year. I was like, this feels like a company in decline where you used to have to fight. And they had security guards with guns and suits to keep people from mobbing the booth to I could just walk up and get the stuff at six o'clock at night. So I'm not shocked Especially since Diamond has been kicking ass, I talk about them all the time, with their Marvel statues. And they have three lines of Marvel statues, the PVC gallery pieces, the premiere pieces, and then the Masterworks pieces. And it's like, there's a lot of players in the statue game when you take Gentle Giant and Diamond and Sideshow and XM and all the people... Gentle Giant felt like they were getting squeezed out. So 
They did, and now they were bought by Diamond. Yeah, it makes me wonder how long this has been going on. Like, you you talked about seeing them at Comic-Con last year and how they were missing quite a few statues that they usually would have. And I kind of wonder if they knew this back then and, like, they kind of started the process of, like, okay, well, statues are going to be moving over to Diamond, and we're just going to kind of keep these lines going. And that's why we didn't see as much in that booth last year. But, I mean, because these things can take, you know, a year or so to finalize before they announce it publicly. So it, it could have been going on that far ago that they, they were already planning on merging these two different companies into one thing that have a bunch of different products to sell now. It could be. What I know is that Daniel is the guy we've interviewed at General Giant the past couple of years, and he parted ways with General Giant just before Christmas. So... Take that for what you will, but that happened just before Christmas, and 45 days later it was announced they were being bought by Diamond. It's really hard to say, especially since Gentle Giant. It's not like Disney buying Fox, right? It's, uh, <laughs> But apparently there's a lot of discussion still going on. Like, will there still be a Gentle Giant booth? Did Gentle Giant sign a contract with San Diego that says we will have this booth for X number of years? So... I was talking to Zach at Diamond about this, and there were a lot they didn't know. There's still a lot of things being ironed out at the senior levels there. But oh, Maybe Weta will take over that whole block then. They've been growing every year. Yeah, they have. And it, I don't think – I think Diamond could benefit by having some extra exclusives because they have exclusives – but they never really feel like they have the heat around the Mini Mate set or around the gallery statue. I think Mini Mates are the best kept secret in the collecting world. I really do. I, they're underrepresented in fandom. And I think if more people found out about them, we'd have a hell of a lot harder time buying them. But just to talk about some stuff Diamond did show, they had some more select figures to keep on that line. They have a Captain Marvel Cree outfit select figure with the Mohawk on display and with the Flurkin. <laughs> Something wrong confused. with that cat's eyes. Yeah, he looks confused or he's like, what? What are you doing, crazy lady? It, the eyes are both going to the left. Reminds me of those clocks where like the cat eyes go left, right, left, right. <laughs> but I asked Green, how about, you know, the red, the blue, the gold, and Zach was kind of tight-lipped. I wonder if we might be seeing that as a Disney Store exclusive. As we know from years of covering Diamond Select, Disney gets to announce those exclusives, not Diamond, and Disney sets their own schedule as to when and why. <laughs> I'm also wondering how early of a prototype this is, because that silver part near her mohawk didn't make it into the movie. It ended up being more green there. That's true. And so I'm not sure about this one. That one, I have to check if it's up for pre-order. They also did have on display one I know is up for pre-order, and that's the Sandman. Nice. Just in time for for Spider-Man off to road trip in Europe, whatever that Far one's called. Far from home. Far from home. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the Captain Marvel figure is coming in July, so... Uh, that is beyond prototype stage, I would think. So maybe it, maybe they'll have time to change the paint app by July. We'll see. Interesting. But yeah, There's Sandman, not... he comes with just a ton of accessories, though. And I love the sculpt on his face. It's different than what we've seen Hasbro do a few times. Yeah, and got, got the cool style hair that Hasbro always seems to struggle with. It makes it look like sideways cornrows on their figures, usually. <laughs> And then Psylocke, which is also coming out this summer, was on display there with the alternate head and removable yellow belt that kind of hangs there and the danger room background. I love that for years, for as long as we've been doing this show and far earlier, Diamond has been releasing X-Men with the danger room backdrops that just keep building their own diorama. Yeah, that's awesome. And I thought they did a great job with her hair, too. Just the wash they put on it and the metallic blue of her suit. Oh, yeah. Getting getting kind of close to Kodo-style hair with some of these. But that's 
it is is it pretty cool looking i dig i dig the what they're doing with this and i like how the articulation i mean you can see it in the shoulders but it's not overly pronounced in the shoulders and elbows i don't mind it yeah pretty well hidden with the the paint apps and whatnot as for some gentle giant stuff there was one item that i saw at san diego last year that i'm like i need this I must have this in my life, and it was never even put up for pre-order, but it looks like it is still coming. The animated Gwenpool statue where she's running over Howard the Duck. Aw, oh, poor Howard. <laughs> I, I think it's just like a plushie of Howard, but I, you know, I collect all the Howard stuff, and I'm like, they, they gotta come out with this. I, I still think this is gonna be the second Man-Thing statue, though, that pulled away from me. They were gonna do the big Man-Thing statue, and then they were gonna redo it in, like, the $100 line, and now there's no sign of the Man-Thing statue. But Gwenpool's still coming. Is <laughs> it so just me? Is there a little bit of, like, a precious moments feel to this, to this oh, look? Oh, yeah, it is very much the big-eyed, blonde figurines that you Grandma has in the house. <laughs> My grandma never had figures with that was showing that much thigh. No, but it's <laughs> the face has a specific precious moments y look and somehow I ended up with a precious moments figurine. I have no idea where I got it from. I was unpacking a box, I'm like, what the hell is this? I didn't buy this. I think we got it as a wedding gift from somebody who doesn't know us or probably re gifted it. <laughs> that could be. I don't remember buying it. I don't know where I got it from, so <laughs> Mini busts that we saw at General Giant are still coming out. That Carnage one, I desperately wanted too. And Cable and Ghost Rider were pretty nice looking at San Diego, but the Carnage one with the high gloss paint. So it looks like those are those are still being solicited by Diamond at Toy Fair, and hopefully will still be coming out through, you know, their General Giant brand for a while. Nice. Yeah, I'm not huge into busts, but that that Carnage is really cool looking. See, I've, I'm very picky choosy on busts anymore. As we've discussed, it costs more than half a hot toy and you're only getting half a hot toy and then you can't move it. But I love how the hot toy currency is just the currency. <laughs> <laughs> how much is a new sofa? It's three and a half hot toys. <laughs> hey, the prices are more stable and a better investment than Bitcoin. <laughs> very true. That is very true. <laughs> but, I mean, cable... I, I like it, but I think I can live without it. Ghost Rider, I get a lot of Ghost Rider stuff, so I, I could go 50-50 on that. But that Carnage, I was like, I need that Carnage. So I'm glad to see it's still coming. But it's not like Diamond isn't releasing enough statues of their own, right? This is a wall they had on display that isn't even all of the gallery statues they've done so far. Wow. I'm looking forward to having a display very similar to this in our basement later this year, by the way. Okay. <laughs> I'll start making up, up the I little think... display cards. Yeah. <laughs> Please do. Why don't you just come visit for a weekend, Justin? I can leave and you guys can just do toy stuff. <laughs> Deal. I, I think you should. We need to come up with like something so we can have little cards that we put next to the stuff all over the collection. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> then you could like <laughs> switch them out when I'm not looking and <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean they're coming out with so many gallery statues there's no way we can even talk about them all maybe I'll do some one shot reviews really quick as I start putting them out but there were a couple I really wanted to focus on the first they're doing the gamer vs spider-man of course but they're doing the gamer vs. Rhino from the game. They're Why? like the only people I can know doing this, and I, I love that they're doing it. It is pretty cool looking. It looks like it looks like a Hulkbuster version of Rhino. It's like a halfway between Amazing Spider-Man, I am the Rhino, and the comic book. You are just never gonna <laughs> let that go, are you? Never. <laughs> is this gonna fulfill your need for a ridiculous Rhino figure? <laughs> I mean, seriously, it was thirty seconds of the movie. Look at the sculpt. Look at the eyes on that. Oh, I'm not denying. It's good. I'm just questioning your life choices. <laughs> you married you know, me. I did. Marjorie, he's been writing letters to Paul Giamatti trying to trying to get him to talk to Hot Toys to get it made. 
That doesn't surprise me. Please don't put ideas in his head, Justin. No, I'm actually so glad they didn't make it. I hate that Rhino. But this, I love the game. Rhino was fun in the game. I've beaten Rhino in the game, and I like that they're going deeper into that gamerverse. I mean, they're doing a comic run that's starting real soon in the gamerverse universe. I think this is, I love that it's taking off. Yeah. And then I, I, I'll, I, go ahead. I always appreciate when they can bring a, a somewhat real world design into a classic character, especially like a rhino where it's like, let's not just make a big, you know, anamorphic rhinoceros that stands on its hind legs. Let's, let's figure out a way to make it somewhat realistic that a man put on some sort of suit. And that's why we call him rhino. And I think and, they pulled that off here. And equally realistic that a man can stick to walls and swing on webs across New York City. Mm -hmm. And make his own outfit somehow overnight with a sewing machine. Here's the thing. When a game is fun, I love it to death. And I will just immerse myself in it. And I have all the pops from the game. I have the two, three Hasbro figures they made from the game. If Hasbro did an entire Gamerverse line, I'd be into it. Funko did an entire Gamerverse line, and those are on clearance except for the Spider-Man ones. I don't think the ones from Contest of Champions really uh, got people in their sweet spot. No. But I like that they're doing this, and I'd be curious to see what others they're doing. And, I mean, that game's such a hit. A sequel with even more merchandising feels guaranteed. And then, you know, they had some more on display, the Iron Man from... Infinity War, but I wanted to really focus on what I think is the most unique statue I've ever seen them do, Iceman. Mm-hmm. Look at all that translucence. Are you loving that, Justin? Dude, imagine getting that and just, like, setting it on top of, like, a couple blue puck lights and just having that it bottom amazing. lit. Oh, yeah. yeah. The fact that it looks like glass. I mean, I was standing in front of it in person it does not look like plastic. And because it's not a figure, there's no joints that break the illusion. You know, every time we have a translucent figure, you see the inner pegs and everything around, you know, the more articulation it has, the more solid plastic you see through the plastic. But this, the sculpting on it is so amazing. And it just looks like glass for a $50 statue in such a dynamic pose. This one it, it just it stunned me because it looks like a $300 statue. Yeah, it's really cool. You know me, I'm not a huge statue collector, but something like this, I think I might have to grab just for how unique and cool looking it is. And the fact that you may be able to find it at GameStop, you know? Yeah, exactly. And then they did have more of their half scale mini busts on display, and I picked up venom i talked to zach and it turned out the venom one which i was hemming and hawing about is sold out from diamond and these are limited pieces they're not making any more so i'm like crap i gotta buy that venom now and so from toy fair i placed an order on my phone so it was sitting here waiting for me when i got home and so i'll be doing a one-shot review of the venom half scale bus to see how these compare to the old sideshow legendary scale busts and things nice the other company I really want to touch on briefly was Kotobukiya because we've covered them since day one. I've loved their stuff since before we did the show. I have every Bishoujo and almost every Artifacts Plus they've done. We've interviewed Adi Granov because he had their line of Artifacts statues. Just love what Koto does. The guy we've interviewed so often for years at Koto since the start of the show, Dan, is he moved on from Koto. And now Kodo seems to have taken a left turn in regards to what it does. It's kind of strange. I mean, I knew they were getting out of the housewares thing, like the chop sabers and the sandwich shapers. I knew that wasn't a hit in America. No, but I love that stuff. I did try the egg molds, and they're more hard than you would think to get an egg shaped like Darth Vader's head. That actually yeah. is exactly as hard as I would think. <laughs> okay. Well, you gotta have an egg that's just the right size is the problem. <laughs> but, you know, they've had a lot of statues, but I did feel that I don't have all of the Avengers ones they put out. I felt like that Captain Marvel looked like a bad gallery statue for twice the price. And I 
held off on their defenders ones because they also lacked a lot of detail. I, I, I loved what they did with the X-Men 92 set. I mean, those lack detail, but it worked because it was based on a cartoon. But I have felt like their statues, while they have some standouts that when we saw at New York Comic Con, the Iron Spider-Man, that one was amazing. The Thanos was amazing. But by and large, I felt like they were getting a little samey. I guess they must have thought the same thing because they've changed their model. This is one of their old statues. It's still not out yet, but old style. The Artifacts Venom. It's $250. But understand, this is vinyl. This isn't one of their fine art statues that's resin, polystone. This is one of the vinyl snapped together ones. And prices have just gone up to the point that this is $250. Oh. Yeah, that is, says $229, though. You see it says MSRP of $250. Yes, I know. I'm just letting you know. Yeah, I'm just showing that it is, that's the cheapest price I could find on it was $230 uh -huh. also. At wow. Big Bad Toy Store, if you can't tell from the font and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a cool-looking Venom. Do not get me wrong, but what, I thought it was a fine art statue for the price. So they're doing something different for the Artifacts line. They're now doing Artifacts Premiere. And if you could look at the art they've done for this, I feel that they're doing for their 10th scale statues, kind of like what Hasbro did with the Black series of Star Wars stuff. They're trying to go and say, these are high-end items. They're in the Artifacts Plus scale. They look to me to be about the exact same size and scale, maybe slightly bigger, but they are now not called the Artifacts Plus, but just the Premier line. And they had, you know, they're soliciting three of them so far, Thor, Iron Man, and Cap. Yeah, I mean, you can tell that they've really upped the detail in these. I mean, I, I would call it the, the crazy texture line. I mean, that's what I'm seeing here is each one of these has just painstakingly crafted texture. Even the Iron Man, like, it looks like there's a difference between the types of metals on his suit. And that's what I've loved about Kodo is I've always felt like they're able to take vinyl and make it look like metal. There are Iron Man statues they've done for the movies. I've just been endlessly impressed i have some of their avengers ones out here and the wash they put on the hulk and everything and the hulk buster and here this is taking it to a new level now they had some of these on display and they are nice looking statues i really love the sheen they've given to iron man and the dynamic way they've made him look like he's flying by you know he's touching a rock with his shin but that's, you know, hard to balance, too. <laughs> I might have missed you say, what scale are these? One-tenth, I believe. Okay. Same as, like, their old artifacts. But these are also going to be limited. So when you buy these, you get these cards with them. And the cards, it was a little tricky to get a photo of, but they're numbered to tell you the serial number of the item. So instead of printing it on the statue, they're putting it in these cards that you get with them. And so the cards can't be bootlegged. If you see in this picture, it took a lot of getting. It's got this like holographic circuit board printed on it. Oh, right on. Like a, a really cool certificate of authenticity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, the cards are a neat idea, but my fear with things like this is getting separated from the statue and since it's not on the statue, if you're buying it on the secondhand market that you can't ever guarantee it. You know what I mean? But by having that holograph, it's going to let you know. All right. I'll just, I went to eBay because I was behind on my Spider-Man statues and I bought a Venom Kotobuki on eBay. Thought it was from Japan. It was from China. I got it, and I could tell this is not legit. That explains why it was only $35. Okay, wait a second. Let's back up. <laughs> this has happened to you before. Only once. The, all the Kai Arts? 
Yes, that's the ones. But it was multiple figures. But it was I'm one the, purchase. I, I'm, I'm the proud owner of that Venom. <laughs> <laughs> so I should have sent you this one. <laughs> but the bootlegs are hitting for Kodo stuff now, is what I'm saying. This way, if if they say it's separated, you may not know if it's authentic. But if you get this with it, you're pretty dang sure that it's an authentic statue. Unless, you know, there, I'm sure somebody somewhere will buy an authentic statue, keep it, and then turn around and, like, buy a bootleg and flip the trading card just because they're jerks. The but... 3D printers are going to change things. You know that, right? But, again, look at, like, what Justin said. The texture. Look at the wash on cap scales. Thor, I love the dynamic pose. I love the art on the card everything is really nice hulk they haven't solicited hulk yet if there's a misstep you know hulk there's only so many poses you can do with hulk right <laughs> now, I, like I was what, standing there giggling about this one the whole time i like hulk what they've done <laughs> yeah. i like the wash they've given him i mean i like the look at the teeth the tongue there's no doubt this is well sculpted I mean, the fists, the feet, the base, that looks like real stone. But there's something about that pose. <laughs> Hulk needs some Metamucil. There's a Hulk squat in the woods. <laughs> I mean, if I back up a little bit, when I had the Iron Man up, you can see Hulk from the back here, and it is worth me going back for. Because you, you see Hulk there on the left? <laughs> and then... Before the cards here, you see Hulk. <laughs> it's just not right. <laughs> okay, but it's a nice line. They're doing what they've done before. We're going to give you a series of figures. They're going to be limited and numbered, so you feel a compulsion to buy. I get all of this. And I was kind of excited. I'm like, these look nice. I like that they're limited. As a collector, that makes me excited. And then I saw the prices, and I'm like, oh, my, wow. Yeah, it's a bit steep. These 10th scale statues that I've been buying from them, the Artifacts Plus, have been in the 60 to 80 region with maybe Hulkbuster going up to, like, 100 by doing this, by calling it Premiere, this is a new line of statues. It's the same scale, but it is at a premium price for the quality you're getting. Yeah, half a hot toy now. <laughs> <laughs> Iron Man's about a third, but yes. <laughs> I like that they landed on like the 130 price point, but like you could tell they had a meeting. It's just like... Uh, this Thor, we need to get an extra five bucks out of him. <laughs> that cape, though. <laughs> and I'm sure Hulk will be more. He's bigger. They always charge a little bit more for him. But that is a steep price. And I'm just, all right, I've pre-ordered all three on show here because I want to review them. But we'll see how I keep going after I have them in my Why hand. Why didn't you just get one? You gotta Hi, have comparisons. I'm Arnie. What's wrong with you? Have, have we met? Yes. Like, quit giving me crap about my trading cards. I bought you your trading cards. I know, but you give me crap about them. Then I also wondered, now, there was no sign of any fine art statues, which is a first for covering Kodo. They had a same size booth that they've had in years past. However, the amount of product was probably about a quarter if not less. Yeah, they usually have everything because it's a it's a buyer show. You're trying to get people to put your items in retail, so everything they have to sell, they put out there. Here, those are pretty much the only Marvel items they had. And I wondered though if the fine art statues, the artifacts old statues, the artifacts plus, I'm not seeing any of those. Is the Bishojo line dead? Because they solicited this Captain Marvel. I had a pre-order in for her. And they say she's delayed years. <laughs> it might be canceled. Hmm. They got this far along. I mean, they have the final photos they solicited of her. And yet 
I'm wondering if because of the movie and the feminist message, Marvel was like, yeah, we don't want her in your pretty girl line. And I say that because that's the direct translation of Bishojo. Right. Uh, maybe. I, I could see that being a possible issue. But fortunately, the Bishojo line is continuing. They had on display Domino. They had the sculpt fully there, unpainted. And right after Toy Fair, she went up for pre-order. And I, I do like the little Deadpool doll she comes with and that she's in a different uniform than I usually see. It does not look like a standard off-the-rack domino. No, and her stand is a is an actual domino. That's kind of cool. This is this is an interesting little piece. It's not as sexualized as some of the other other ones that they've done in the past, but you know, I mean it's it's cool looking. Yeah, I mean Kodo's Bishojo line is intended to be what's the word I'm looking for? It's a little bit more modest than the other ones that they do for different lines. That's what I'm saying. The other lines. It's, like, supposed, to be, lines, it's supposed to be somewhat titillating. Yeah, titillating. No, it, it that's is. A good it, one. It's very and it's very cultural. But it, but the Marvel ones, like I just look back at your shelf of the ones that they done years before because they were hitting hard and heavy for a while. Mm -hmm. And they're more modest because they're not in skimpy outfits. I mean, they're wearing like body suits kind of things. But I mean, for example, when they did the horror line. Horror. Yes, the horror line, not the horror line. <laughs> the, That's a direct translation. <laughs> the female Freddy and the female Jason were like in Daisy Dukes and Yeah, they're right there. Yeah. And, and half shirts and I, I can't put them up on our family friendly show. No. But if you just Google Bishojo and look at some of their Street Fighter stuff, their latest Chun Li or their um poison or even some of the stuff they're doing for gi joe the marvel line is by far the most reined in dc even goes quite a bit more titillating than marvel does but i'm glad to see they're keeping the bishojo style what they've said is one of the issues with getting bishojos out is it was all one artist now they're bringing more artists in doing the Bishojo style and working on the sculpting if one guy's still doing the concepts. So that did come out, but again, a little bit of a price jump. $90 for a Bishojo. Didn't they used to be like 60 Yes. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Price of everything's going up. I mean, say it, it is part of life. You know that, right? I know, but... We just, they're, they're turning a corner now, is what I'm saying, ah. is they just released the premiere line and jumped the price of those, and in tandem, Bishojos are coming out again, but we're jacking the price up another 20 bucks. I mean, honestly, the only thing that is going down in price, and it's not even going down everywhere, is a price of a gallon of milk. You know what I'm saying, though? I, I mean, you're getting the same statue with a less dynamic base than it used to come with for a third more of the price. She's on a great base, though. She is on a great base. And they did reveal, coming out next year, they're going to be doing Dark Phoenix. And this is going to be the first time they're doing it in their new scale. I do have the Dark Phoenix that they did back when these were uh, a smaller scale. I think now they are, I believe, one-eighth, and they used to be one-eleventh or something like that. But the Dark Phoenix, if you Google that she is going for about $400 on eBay. Uh -huh. And so bringing that character back out in a new sculpt in the new scale makes a lot of sense. Oh, nice. And it has repaint potential too for a con exclusive if they want to do that. Yeah. I've been missing their con exclusive Bishojos. Like I kind of hope they might do a domino one too. Yeah. But then Captain Marvel, we wanted to talk about those legends. You know, just a kind of a brief overview of what we're about to look at. The the Marvel Legends line for Captain Marvel has been out for a month or so now, and I've seen it at all the major retailers. I've seen it at Target. Target had an end cap with it, so it was pretty easy to find there. I've seen it at Walmart. It's been available on Amazon for retail price. It shouldn't be a hard wave to pick up if you're looking at it. Yeah, but, I uh, ended up getting some at Walgreens. Well, and yeah. interestingly enough, I've been hitting some stores looking for Endgame stuff, and 
The only one I can ever find on the pegs is Yonrog. Oh, weird. Yeah, i just not finding any. However... You did find, though, Nick Fury, again, at Walgreens. I didn't find Nick Fury. I found Talos, and... You brought home Nick Fury from somewhere. I No, I think you did. No. I didn't find Nick Fury. You did. I don't remember that. <laughs> no, she can I either... really would have remembered Hannibal Lecter Kitty. <laughs> I brought home Talos and Yonrog. Well, I mean, I guess the good thing is it's been a pretty easy to find wave. So if it's something you're interested in, it's it's pretty widely available out there. And I'm kind of digging that it's we don't often get waves that have so many movie specific characters in it. Usually it's about half and half or maybe about, you know, two thirds movie and the rest are comic based. This one only has two comic based characters, but the Build-A-Figures comic base, so maybe that's why they went this way with it. But we did, I feel like we got a lot of Captain Marvel herself with this release. Between two in the main line here and then two exclusives coming out, all basically in the same outfit with little bits of changes and paint and one of them has a jacket on. It, it feels very Brie Larson heavy for a wave. I agree. I feel like we could have gotten some others in here, but she did have two outfits, and we didn't get the Kree outfit, which is disappointing, I think. We, we do. It's the exclusive from Target. Oh, that's right. It is the exclusive at Target. But I feel like one of the other ones should have been the exclusive. Like her hero outfit instead of that one. Yeah, the I think the green outfit feels like... Well, that, that was an exclusive. That's the Target. No, what I'm saying is... Her hero outfit, which is when she changed her colors. that That's the classic comic outfit. That's the one everybody's going to want. That's kind of like saying just because Cap only wore his classic uniform during the climax of Winter Soldier, they should have made that figure an exclusive. Shut up. Get <laughs> her where she lives on that one. <laughs> It's also the the only one in the wave that doesn't come with a build a figure piece. So I think they're kind of kind of assuming that that's the one that the casual fans might go out and buy because it's the one that looks like she looked in the movie and it comes with both heads. It has her her unmasked head and her masked head with the mohawk. So I, I think that's going to be one that hits collectors and casual fans. If you just if you just want one figure to remember the movie, that one I think is two per case and doesn't require a build a figure piece to be laying around for no reason. Yeah, and I I still think the wave has only recently hit well. I ended up I did get some of these figures off Amazon because I even though I ordered a case, the case didn't come fast enough. So I pieced together another wave of them. <laughs> and I figured, you know, having a couple of these builder figures isn't a bad idea. No, I mean they're an army builder. It's not like you have two builder figure hulks sitting there. This is, you know, a sentinel robot, so that's kind of cool. Or Cree Sentry, I guess, not a Sentinel robot. <laughs> but, <laughs> the, you what, know, what, the Cree looked at what the Sentinel design and was like, make me something like that. Just shorter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah, I mean, we can talk about uh, the packaging on these. It's a little bit different than it has been before. Yeah, they, they switched this up a little bit, and it's it's been a few waves now. I think I first noticed with the uh, the GameStop Spider-Man. If you if you notice, if you open your box from the right hand side, that the inner flap just flaps down. You don't have to take that whole tray out anymore and you can pull the whole figure out. And instead of the plastic that used to be glued to the inside of the box, that all comes out. And it's like a lid over the whole figure. Just kind of neat. I'm not sure why they changed it or what the advantage of it is. It just it makes it feel a little bit more like a high end or collectible, you know, like how figure arts come in the box that you open up and you have to unsnap that upper tray to get everything out. You open your figure arts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm like, no, I, I, I honestly don't know what you mean. <laughs> Gotta open the figure arts, man. <laughs> They're super articulated for a reason. Yeah, that was a nice change. I really suck at opening these, by the way, so... I have to have Arnie open the flap, and then I can go ahead and take them out. <laughs> I always tear them. I don't know why. It's not like I have giant fingers or anything. I just, they tear. All right, we got your camera going, Justin. 
All right, so we should be looking at figure one, which is just your basic Captain Marvel figure that we kind of talked about in her her final outfit that we see her in in the movie with her classic colors. It bothers me because on the back of the card, she's not numbered because she doesn't come with the Build-A-Figure piece. I'm like, but she's still a, a figure. I'm like, is she one? Is she zero? <laughs> <laughs> See, you're looking at it as the figure's numbered. That It's the Build-A-Piece figure that's numbered. I know. It just. Yeah. <laughs> I know it how you're... Him. It's okay. I know how it works. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as the figure goes, I mean, this is a movie based figure and I think they nailed the sculpt and the look and the paint apps are great and you know with the new with the new face technology that they've got going on I think they did a really good job of making Amy Poehler I mean (laughs) (laughs) it does have a bit of an Amy Poehler look I can start my Parks and Rec figure line (laughs) no wait we don't have a Nick Offerman yet yet (laughs) he needs to be a superhero he, he, I, I thought he was uh, Peter from uh, Deadpool 2. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you listen, Russo brothers, we need to have... They're like, done oh, with Marvel. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Darn it. But yeah, no, uh, I mean, sol- solid figure here. We get, we get two sets of hands. We get her fists and we get her flying jazz fingers. Did she ever n- not have a fist in the movie? I didn't notice. Yeah, <laughs> she... <laughs> with her fists closed quite a bit but no i like all the detail in the paint apps and not just the face printing technology which is weirdly kind of dot matrix on mine for her i just i feel like i see points of where this was computer printed but the outfit itself has such clean paint none of the gold has splashed anywhere and there's some fine gold lines on that and that's tricky I feel that Hasbro has upgraded their paint technology just kind of quietly because there's been so many times when we've picked up something that had those lines or like a wash or something and it's been terrible and we've not had that problem for a very long time on either Star Wars or Marvel. No, yeah, no they... lazy eyes for quite a while. Mm-mm. Yeah, they've, they've gotten pretty darn good at that. So that's our first figure. Which one do you prefer? I like the unmasked head. Even though I like the mohawk and the mask and everything, I I feel like the unmasked head's the one I'll display more. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, there's something cool about the the masked version, and I've kind of gone back and forth with this and the Target exclusive one. And I think when I go to display it, I'm probably going to display this one with the mask and her earlier green one without it. Ah, that's that's a good way to go. And yeah, she was mostly masked in this. There's just something about the hair. It looks like it's windswept back or something. It's like she's she should be on the one of the motorcycle riders that they put out in the Legends line with the hair swoop. <laughs> that was one of the issues I had with the movie. Is like I wanted to see how that worked. And the only one time did they really kind of show her mask coming off and letting her hair go free. I'm like, well, how did that happen in the first place? Like, how did it get up into a mohawk? How can you have the vacuum of space and you are protected from it except for a lot of little holes the size of your hair? <laughs> yeah, and, you know, aesthetically speaking from Look's point, it, it she looks like Woody Woodpecker. <laughs> <laughs> right? I can see it. Yeah. I can see it. It also serves no purpose. I, I Why does her hair need to stick out? Because it was in the comic and, it, and that's why. Yeah, and it, it it adds a little bit of dynamic look to it and everything. I think I think it's cool. I just, you know, if we're gonna get this figure repainted, I kind of wish they would have done maybe a, a different sculpt for a second version. But yeah, it's a nitpick. Now, when <laughs> when the before the movie came out, we got these figures, and this cat goose comes with two different figures, and the one that I first saw was with the Samuel Jackson Nick Fury one. And he's all, like, bound up. He's got, like, a ball gag in his mouth. And he's got little cat handcuffs on. And I'm like, oh, okay, so is this cat a bad guy or or what? So when I got him, I initially posed him. Because he's got, if you look at the cat, he's got, like, right on the tuft in the back of his neck. He's got little grooves where you can have a character holding him up. (laughs) That's a great little detail. Yeah. I never thought you could have somebody holding him. And it 
in the I think again differences from concept to movie in the movie they only put like the mask on him I was waiting in the movie because I'd had the toy first I'm like where's the handcuffs <laughs> right and yeah before the movie I was thinking okay this is one of the main bad guys so I've had him posed on my desk with Sam Jackson having the cat looking down the barrel of a gun for months now <laughs> <laughs> well, if you've seen the movie, that may have been his final reaction. <laughs> I wouldn't have kept the flurkin thing around after what it did. But we're getting the reuse of the, the suited body that we've been getting quite a bit lately here. So not a whole lot to talk about. But I think the face sculpt that they did for, for young Sam Jackson, young Nick Fury is pretty good here. Yeah, I like that one quite a bit. I think that they've really captured... 90s Sam Jackson, you know, I've, in addition to our Parks and Rec series, now I can start my Die Hard with a Vengeance figure line. Yeah. Just, you know, put some, customize some hair and he's Pulp Fiction, right? Exactly. You're going to give him a big kahuna burger and he'll be all good to go. If only Talos came with that, like, milkshake cup because it looks just like the one Sam Jackson had in Pulp Fiction. Yeah, it's a nice little Easter egg, isn't it? <laughs> but, yeah. I, I mean, he... The cat is completely inarticulated, but I love that, like you said, he's got the tuft you can hold. I didn't even realize that until Marjorie put her, it in Sam Jackson's hand. And he comes with a realistic looking gun. We've talked about how the guns are often silly looking, but here you get, you know, a black pistol. Yeah, and it's nice to have a real world weapon instead of a laser pistol or something. A funky sword or axe? Funky sword. That's the name of my punk band, by the way. <laughs> Next up is we get our first ever movie universe scroll figure. I was surprised that they did Talos and not Army Builder Scroll. You know, I, honestly, in figure form, I can't really tell that this is the Ben Mendelsohn other than the outfit. Right, and even the outfit isn't all that distinct from the other ones that were on screen, you know? Mm -hmm. He so should have the to... suit jacket. <laughs> that would have been a nice little touch. I, I can see a, a scroll two pack in our future sometime down the line. Yeah, I don't think it would be that hard. It's standard body and some newly sculpted heads. There's something in the eyes that says Talos to me, but the face itself, I'm, I'd have to have other figures to compare it to to say whether or not they did a good job by comparison, but this of the three we've discussed so far, I mean, it looks like the movie, but it doesn't look like the actor. And yet with the practical makeup in the movie, they made it look like the actor. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yes, definitely. I guess my only issue with this, the sculpt looks great. The, the outfit is cool and unique, but it almost looks like they had some pre-design looks at it because this is not, they made it look like he has hair. You know, they painted like this gray, like widow's peak hairdo on him. And in the movie, he was just all green and had some like little bit of wrinkles that had maybe a little bit of brown in him. Huh. I want that is that is interesting. I, you know, looking at the toy, I, I didn't catch it. Maybe that's one of the things that's throwing me. Hmm. But now, now you have me looking up the trailer for the movie to see if I can see his head. <laughs> but nailed it on the sculpt and it you know the the coat thing he's wearing kind of hinders the articulation a little bit you can only get his legs so far apart and whatnot but I think he's a pretty good looking figure you know what they had the purple stuff on his head including the widow's peak the difference is it went further back so it looks like he has three purple stripes on his head in the movie versus um just having uh basically a shaved hairdo ah interesting did All he right. come with any accessories no nope so Came... he really really needed honestly i wanted a, 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 a scrawl gun they but i i would have taken a milkshake <laughs> okay. now this this actually looks a little bit more like amy poehler than than the other one with the shorter hair. <laughs> oh, this one totally is Parks and Rec's Amy Poehler. <laughs> so hey, much... she hosted the Oscars this year. No, just an <laughs> elevator, no host. <laughs> oh my 
God, it does. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it, it's a good reuse of the parts that we've already talked about on the, the Captain Rick. Marvel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, new arms and a, a coat sculpt over the, the upper torso. But other than that, I think a slightly different face sculpt with new hair. Yeah, I'm comparing the two bodies just to see if there's any paint differences or anything. And no, I mean, they completely reuse the same stuff, which is good. I mean, you want consistency there. But um, yeah, it's, it's a new head, new arms, and a vest piece. Yep. But I like this that is look where... for Does she wear this in the movie? Briefly. Yeah. Okay. She does at the end. Okay. Monica gets That's her right. back jacket. That's right. Okay. And she takes off. That's right. Only seen it twice. It's not on video yet. I'll, I'll learn. This, but I, this I've is always it, liked that look for this figure. Oh, yeah. It, it gives it a nice real world feel to it. But this is where digital printing really comes in. Like, look at all the detail they got in that graphic on the back of her jacket. That's something we wouldn't have seen even three, four years ago. They just would have skipped that detail. Yeah, and it's not like a decal. It's painted, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I believe so. I, I don't want to scratch it off, but I think, yeah. I can't tell. It's higher gloss. So either they used a glossy paint or it could be some kind of transfer. Overlay decal, possibly. And then we get Goose again, but in a little bit more of a playful type of thing yeah, yeah like he, um he came in the package and she was holding him like a newborn this is the one that you pose if you grab your sam jackson figure and you can pose him with a uh, goose reaching out for the face <gasps> you can oh my god look at that <laughs> minor spoiler <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting I wish Goose said, I don't know, a little articulation or something. And the way it sits back on its on its butt instead of laying like an animal or on all fours, it's it's, it's disturbing. <laughs> it really does feel like a a doll accessory, but I'm I'm glad they they put it in there. The gold eyes too. It has eerie eyes. Mhm. Mm <laughs> It's like Scott Farkas flirting. Scott Farkas. <laughs> All right, then we get Jude Law. I didn't know that was Jude Law until the second time I watched that movie. It's because I told you walking out from the first time yeah. the movie. I did not realize that was Jude Law. <laughs> he looks different than he has since he last saw him in AI, got, I think. Well, and he got hair plugs. Yeah, maybe that's it. And his hair wasn't blonde. <laughs> So this figure is kind of weird. It feels a lot beefier, a lot bigger than Jude Law did in the movie. So I'm not even really sure if this is meant to actually be his character, just like more of a generic Cree soldier, because we don't get Jude Law's head. We just get this masked head. So it could be almost anybody. That was my thinking, too. When I saw it was Jan Rog, I, I went into the movie not knowing that Jan Rog was Jude Law. And... In fact, just yesterday, I was reading some articles about Captain Marvel, and I saw someone say, we now know from the toys that Jude Law is Jan Rog. I'm like, how did you figure that out from the toy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't that wasn't apparent at all from the toy. Maybe maybe a different toy, toy line, but not from this one. Yeah, the fact that we don't get the unmasked helmet is disappointing, honestly, because he very, yeah, like, briefly does he have the helmet on. I mean, this this figure, I mean, it's cool looking, but it feels a little bit uninspired. I mean, the paint feels a little lacking. I mean, I'm not saying it's sloppy. It just feels, I don't know. It just, there's not a lot of detail to the paint. There's detail in the sculpt, but the paint just isn't, isn't up to snuff. Get a close up of that face. The face is actually very androgynous. I mean, if you take it off the body, You're that, that could be, yeah, I know. It's okay. just very androgynous. But cool, you know. I mean, if you're if you're really hoping for a Jude Law figure, this isn't it. But a generic Cree, hey, it works. Yeah, that's how I feel. It's like I could get a bunch of these Yonrog and have a Cree army. I don't feel like I have a Jude Law figure. Maybe you know, for Marvel's twelfth anniversary, Marvel Studios twelfth. Well, <laughs> if you had the extra Captain Marvel head with the mohawk, you could repaint it in Cree colors and paint her hair dark and have a Minerva, since they didn't make a Minerva. 
but they did hold on. What? We'll get to that. That's part of the Target exclusive. <gasps> oh, I, I didn't see. Do you have that, Arnie? I haven't opened that. It's okay. it's still in its shipping container. That's handy. So that that is it for the movie figures in this line. Now we get into the comic ones, and we get. And if, if you have any question about that, the movie ones have a Captain Marvel logo on the top flap, and the comic ones are just black. Yep. So we get Grey Gargoyle here. I don't know if anybody's been chomping at the bit for this figure, but to me, it's it's cool. It just feels like a standard release comic figure. You know, when when they need to throw something out there, it's like, all right, what can we what can we do? I mean, I guess one of the cool things that they did here that I haven't seen them do before is there's actually like flex of little darker bits of plastic in the in the mold here so it's like gray with a darker gray flex stone to it gray gargoyle is a character i've i've heard of him i kind of know who he is but i he's the one uh, he's one of the two both comic based figures i'm less familiar with here and so i was reading the back copy to be like you know okay so tell me who is this gray gargoyle, what is his, what is his deal? What is his agenda? And I found it a little bit odd that it says, Dr. Paul Duvall discovers his ability to turn his body to stone and becomes the transmuting mercenary gray gargoyle. I'm like, so you just suddenly realize, Hey, I can turn to stone. You're immediately going to become a mercenary with that? Like, I, I just, <laughs> was he a mercenary before or was it, I could turn to stone. What can I do with this? Mercenary. <laughs> I can hang out on buildings and watch out for crime. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I would love to see somebody like somebody I work with suddenly get a superpower and discover why would they go to evil from that? You know? <laughs> How that, how is that your first job choice? <laughs> He's also kind of non-committal on the whole cape thing. It's like it's a cape slash vest with the things this that go under his arm. This is called a shrug. A shrug. Thank you. Yes, it's a shrug when it's like kind of just over your shoulders and not your full arms kind of thing. The big popped collar. like. Well, that's something different. <laughs> I'm sorry, his cape is the weakest part of this entire figure. He's also it's got... Just, I, I know it's like because he's the gray gargoyle and the colors, but it's just. It's a little too translucent. And it looks so freaking cheap and yucky because of that. Yeah, I mean, it's at the end of the day, it's just kind of a, a blah gray piece of plastic. I mean, it's, you know. Yeah, I'm glad they put the flex in or it would really be bad. But it, I like the blue they used. I mean, it's a very striking blue against all the gray drab i mean what are they gonna do it's a gray gargoyle that's the name of the character yeah i know there wasn't much they could do <laughs> I, I also love though he has a mustache <laughs> does he yeah oh yeah look at that <laughs> <laughs> kind of goofy i mean there's nothing else you can use that head for a cool tombstone custom if you don't like the one that we got not too long ago yeah. And then the last figure is another one I don't know all that well. I don't know I don't know him very well at all. In fact, I don't know him. But I will say this is perhaps one of the prettiest figures they've done, and I believe I have nail polished the color of his thighs. <laughs> Do you see the glitter? Oh mm -hmm. yeah. This figure we That's actually really got That's really amazing. We got to hold this figure in hand. Was it this last Comic-Con or even a year before? I, I just remember they were putting it out in the booth and one of the Hasbro guys handed it to us so we could check out the translucents. Because it was this past Comic-Con because we didn't, they wouldn't announce where, where, what wave it was with or anything. They hadn't talked about Captain Marvel yet. Right. So it's, it's a little difficult to see it, but like this is a somewhat translucent figure. Those flex are actually in there. This figure is like a very dark, clear plastic. Huh, I have to hold him up to a light bulb to notice that. I didn't notice in card or in hand. But yeah, he is slightly translucent in a couple places. <laughs> yeah, it seems like the one we saw at Comic-Con, maybe it was better lighting, I don't know. But that one felt more translucent, more apparently translucent than this final version we got. But, you know, pretty cool little figure to get with the basic sculpt that we've been getting. 
They added a little his, bit. His helmet is soft in the cheeks, making me think briefly that it might pop off, but I don't think it actually does. Hmm. From the side, he kind of has got a Marvin the Martian type of <laughs> vibe going on. <laughs> He does. It's it's the fin on top. Where's the kaboom? <laughs> I and I I do feel his weapon and his uh, bracelets suffer from cheap gold plastic syndrome. Oh yeah. yeah, the the laser pistol for sure. But he's got mine a has a bit of a loose uh, torso, midriff, torso, and neck. He was kind of not too stiff of articulation here. Hmm. Mine's neck is a little bit loose, but it stays. Yeah, I mean, it's staying, but it, it moves real easy. Yeah. Working holster and all that, you know. It is what it is. It rounds out the wave, and I don't know. Like, just color scheme-wise, it's a little little too close to the Jan Vale figure that, that sits right Jan next to it. Jan Rog, sorry, on the... This is this Janus is Vale. <laughs> the Jan Rog <laughs> figure that sits next to it on the, the shelf, you know, so... They just kind of blend together a little bit visually at the store. Yeah. Yeah, and neither one does a whole lot for me. I actually like Grey Gargoyle more than this one. Even though this is translucent with specs, it's just, I don't know, Grey Gargoyle has a cool cheesiness to him, and I love that collar. Whereas this one just feels kind of soldiery. He's a, you know. Yeah. yeah. Kind of Silver Age comic-y to my, to my eye. Which isn't always a bad thing. No, not at all. But you get all of them so you can build the century. <laughs> Think you're going to need a wide angle lens for that one. <laughs> He's going to have to bend down to see. Hey, guys. <laughs> all right. Is it just me? Oh, or is this a... is a great figure. <laughs> <laughs> he has a pie plate on his head. It is pie day. Yeah. That is a pie plate. Or a bottle cap. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You guys tell me. This is if I had to make a list of build a figures that I really, really want. I don't know that this would even make the list if it wasn't super far down. No. I've been very transparent about this. The cosmic comics are a weak spot for my Marvel knowledge. I I don't know who Janis Vell is. I don't know who a Cree Sentry is. So since I don't know. I obviously wouldn't be requesting them, but I am now interested enough to go find some comics with a Kree Sentry because I do like the look of this figure. I, I ended up, I bought a wave, I then bought the wave in stores, I then pieced together a third wave from various places. So I did this so I could army build three Kree Sentry. <laughs> a, a figure that you're not even sure if you like that much. I, I don't know if I like the character, but I like the figure. I think the figure looks pretty cool. I mean, if you want to have Captain Marvel going against something tough, have her go against this giant Kree sentry. Well, I mean, it's it's got decent articulation. I, I do feel like there's a lot of apocalypse parts here. <laughs> yeah, and I have to pull that out to see, but I don't know that there are any. I mean, this feels like a lot of new the boots? sculpting. Maybe the boots. The boots, and I felt like some of the muscles might be. Quite possibly. It's been a while since I've had that figure out on my desk, so I, I guess I'm just a little underwhelmed by the paint here. I mean, it, it's it's cast in a in a purpley kind of not translucent, but like what's that opalescent type of soapy feeling plastic with with just some silver paint. It could, it could use a wash, you know, like a darker wash to bring out some of the details. Yeah, I do agree. I think you know customizers like you especially on the silver but maybe even on the purple a, a little wash would go a long way i'd be very underwhelmed by him this is a one percenter <laughs> to us no yeah. i mean yeah to, uh, no i mean there's probably like one percent of people who were like losing their crap over this and we're like okay yeah it's fine you know what i mean I just, I, I love his silly eyes. I love the bottle cap head. And he's very poseable. I mean, just the being the bigger figure, there's a lot you can do with him. Well, you can pop his arm off. <laughs> I've already done that a few times. Don't steal my thunder. Uh, <laughs> All the crashes you heard were his arms falling off. Yeah, I mean, it's not a disappointment of a Build-A-Figure. It's just, eh, like I said, 
choice of character is not something that I would have personally had high on my want list, but you know, it's out there and it's if it's gonna be in a wave, this is the right wave to go with. So, so that- Yeah, I'm I just glad they did something. I like it when if it's in my wheelhouse, they go deep in the archives and do something. I'm, I'm like, oh my god, I never thought they'd make that. And so I'm sure there is somebody feeling it this way. And I'm glad it's a bigger figure and they didn't just go, let's make the Build-A-Figure Annette Benning. <laughs> <laughs> they would never do that. <laughs> oh, wait. Guardians. Jubilee. <laughs> All right. So... I don't know. You guys said you have it, but you haven't opened it yet. I think part of this review needs to be the Target exclusive that came out. It's actually something you might want to pick up two of because it is actually two different figures if you buy them. I did pick up two. When it went online, I grabbed two different ones because, because, yeah, I did know about this. Yep. It's it's just a repaint of the the Captain Marvel figure that we talked about before in her original green Kree outfit. But it comes with all the pieces you need to make Minerva comes with her head and her satchel and the little scarf thing nice. around her neck. So yeah, it's worth it's worth having two if you want to have an extra member of the Cree army. And they did a great job on that head sculpt with the hair and everything. Oh yeah. You know, it's very sad. I read the art of book for Captain Marvel to get some behind the scenes cuz if you watch the trailers, there's a lot cut out of that movie. There's a scene of Carol, like, graduating from the Air Force in one of the trailers, and there's Sam Jackson saying he was going to retire till he met Carol. There's a lot cut out. So I read the Art of book to see what I could find out. And the entire squad had gone into huge backstories. Like, the actress who played Minerva was saying, in the comics, Minerva's a scientist. So I decided I, that we were going to make her a scientist of battle, and she was going to be scientist sharpshooter on the battlefield. Huh. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, none of that came through. Great for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's on the cutting room floor somewhere, along with the Warriors 3 from Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, out of all these waves and stuff, like, I, I didn't think I was going to be very excited about this Target exclusive, because I thought at first it was just a green version, which, yeah, it's great. She has two different outfits in the movie. I, I want them both. But it was even more exciting to find out after seeing the movie that it, it made sense that you could have it actually adds another character to this wave with the Minerva head and accessories. Is the Carol head identical to the other Carol head? Absolutely. Same exact head sculpt and hair sculpt. Yep. Okay. Yep. I was just curious if they did anything different. Yep. No, that's the exact same. And so is the the masthead, exact same flowing hair the only thing you don't get with this one is the the flying pose hands you get the fist hands and then you get the holding a rifle hand so yeah well i'll take it for minerva joe here <laughs> so yeah all of her little accessories pop right off now i wish i'd gotten three because <laughs> <laughs> i did want i actually got two of the captain marvel so i could display one with Mohawk one without mask. I might need to get two more so you can keep one on, on box. Well, that's cool. Now I'm more anxious to open it. And the, there is a Walmart exclusive Captain Marvel coming that has like translucent pieces and glowy hands, but yeah, not, not seen yet. I haven't heard anybody finding it yet. So it is Walmart. They, they tend to be a little bit behind when it comes to these things. So it's one of those things that's going to hit in summer, and we're going to be like, oh, yeah, I forgot about this. Or it'll be out in two weeks. Who knows? All right. Well, that is it for this week's show. I want to thank everyone who listened live and also thank anyone who gets the slightly edited version of this through our podcast feed. Thanks for listening. We are really excited to be back. We're going to be back in a few weeks, early April. Until then, we're going to be doing a couple of what we're calling one shots, which are going to be. Uh, more quick reviews. Maybe Marjorie will do one opening all her trading cards. Oh, man. I love these cards. These cards are unlike any other trading cards I've seen, guys. They are, like, super amazing. So maybe I'll do something quick on those. And then next weekend we have C2E2. I'm sure we'll be Paul posting. Rudd? Yes, Paul Rudd. Oh. <laughs> Justin, you got to come again sometime to C2E2. I'm still being tempted. Arnie's, Arnie's telling oh. me I can meet Paul Rudd, so I might have to make the trip. 
Yeah, you can you can certainly jump into that photo with us so it looks less like two people awkwardly at a party. <laughs> there will be three people <laughs> awkwardly at a party. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> But we will be at C2E2. Not very long. We're just going to be there basically Saturday and some of Sunday. And you might find us in the upper deck area because if you play some of the versus game, you get a play mat. Mm-hmm. A jump yep. to conclusions mat? No, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> But we do play Marvel versus, which is super fun. We need to do a one shot just explaining the game to people at some point. I don't feel I'm confident to explain the game because sometimes we have to have big discussions about what's going on. Yes. I think that's just gaming. <laughs> it, it's fun, though, because two people can play it a lot better than Legendary, which I think requires a few more people. But yeah, we will be there and Artist Alley and definitely the autograph area for paul rudd did we get any others just paul rudd paul rudd okay so paul rudd but yes we'll be doing some one shot reviews over the next few weeks i'll be doing that diamond select venom bust and then we will be back in before end game that's right hopefully we'll have some end game figures in hand that we can actually talk about by then so all that and more on the next marvelicious toys Thank you for listening to this episode of Marvelicious Toys. There's even more Marvelicious content at our website, MarveliciousToys.com. You can see pictures of the products we discussed, find checklists for collectibles, and read articles on Marvel movies, comics, and collecting. It's all at MarveliciousToys.com. You can also help out our show by telling your friends to listen by posting on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or in person. We would also greatly appreciate a five-star review written on iTunes. A link to our iTunes feed is at MarveliciousToys.com. We want your feedback. You can email us at show at MarveliciousToys.com or find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Find all those links at our website. If you also like Star Wars, Star Wars Collecting is covered at our other podcast, Star Wars Action News, which you can find at SWActionNews.com. Marvelicious Toys is produced and edited by Artie Carvalho. Associate produced by Jason Latham. Video editing by Barrett, Andrew, and Daryl. Graphic design by Justin. Photo editing by Jeff and Curtis. Announcements by Brock. If you want to hear reviews of every movie ever based on Marvel Comics, check out those reviews and hundreds more on the Now Playing Podcast at nowplayingpodcast.com. Marvel Comics and all of the Marvel Multiverse contains are the intellectual property of Marvel Entertainment Incorporated, a subsidiary of the Walt Disney Company, and no infringement is intended. Marvelicious Toys is a Venganza Media production, copyright 2019, all rights reserved. And no part of this show may be reproduced, repurposed, or redistributed without the written permission of Venganza Media Incorporated.